Again, uh, you know, it's a testament to what teammates talk about, former teammates and what they mean to each other. You guys are two of the best people, you're great citizens, great in the community, leadership on the team. This is a special time to, for us to be here and, and help celebrate uh, your selection to the Oiler Hall of Fame. Charlie, as they said, uh, undrafted in 1979, came on from the Oshawa Generals, made his mark with this club, one of seven Edmonton Oilers to win five Stanley Cups. Along with his Stanley Cups, though, he became the first recipient of the NHL Plus Minus Award in 1983 with an amazing plus 62 rating. Followed that up with an 84 gold as a member of Team Canada in the Canada Cup. Charlie retired as a player after 17 seasons and exactly 1,200 regular season and playoff games played. Of course, he was an integral part of the coaching staff and such a big part of the 2006 Stanley Cup run too. Uh, Charlie, so amazing to have you uh, and, and so honored to be here to be a part of it today. Doug Waite became a member of the Edmonton Oilers in 1993-94 season and would eventually be the Oilers captain in 1999. He helped this team at a difficult time of transition, helped this team to five consecutive playoff appearances from 96 to 2001. I can remember it like yesterday, Doug recorded a career high of 104 points in 96 with the Edmonton Oilers. And, you know, Doug's the kind of player that would bring you as a fan off your seat and onto your feet with the puck. You, you were ma magic with the puck, and you led the team in scoring for seven of your eight seasons. On the international stage, as Billy said, Doug won gold medal for Team USA in the 96 World Cup, silver medal at Salt Lake Olymp Olympics in 2002. And on behalf of the selection committee, please welcome the 2023 Oilers Hall of Fame inductees, Doug Waite and Charlie Huddy. Okay, so Charlie, I said to Kevin about, uh, uh, you know, being Koff's partner, um, but I think we've talked a lot about that over your career, but what does it mean to be part of those seven guys that won five Stanley Cups and, and the different players that you played to get to this point through those five Stanley Cups? You know what, it was, uh, obviously it was real special. I mean, you start your career and you're never really sure what's going to happen with it and if you're ever going to you know get into the playoffs win Stanley Cups and I was fortunate to be able to to get five of them but um, it's like everybody said you don't you don't get there without the teammates that you have and for me I, what I remember credit to Slats because he'd always get the right people and he'd have that dressing room he had a thumb on the pulse of that room and he'd made sure that it was it was working right and he'd always had certain guys in at the trade deadline or before the before the uh, before we got into playoffs, but you know I remember bringing in guys like Kenny Linsman and, and Kent Nielsen and stuff like that, but new guys that were going to fit into our lineup and help us win. But um, just a special time. I mean, how can it not be right? And you go through it, and your different teammates come in at different times through the year um, to fill out the team, and uh, I think that was the exciting thing is seeing after you won a couple of Stanley Cups and seeing a guy win his first Stanley Cup is pretty exciting, you know, because they all, you win them in all different ways and uh, to see those guys come in and uh, win their first Stanley Cup was pretty special. Dougie, uh, I think it was Kevin who gave you a call, was it not? And uh, tell me what you were feeling when you got a call about this honour. Well, first of all, thanks for having us to the roast. Uh, appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was about 1.30 in the morning. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I was sleeping. Uh, but, uh, no, he, call, he called earlier in the day, and I was, I was uh, I think I was scouting, uh, scouting some hockey, doing some, some work in San Jose and, and uh, watching our rookies play. So I gave him a shout back later, and uh, he gave me the news. It was amazing. Uh, butterflies immediately came back. I'm sorry, my mind is wandering because it's just so fun when you can win five cups. Oh, that's gross. Look at that guy never won one before. Look at him. He's first. <laughs> like it's <laughs> the fun, the fun you must have had, you guys. I'm telling you, I can't imagine having more fun on a team for eight years and we never even got it. We got out of the first round twice. Uh, but uh, it just, it struck me funny. Uh, 
but Kev, Kev, I don't know. Kevin's meant so much to uh, to the Oilers, but uh, it was funny. We were reminiscing last night. Uh, my roommate, my teammate, my assistant coach, my head coach, my GM. <laughs> he trades me, and then the, tells me I'm in the Hall of. Fame. I mean, he's done everything. He's done it all, possibly, for you. <laughs> and uh, he's done a great job at all of them. But a wonderful man, and uh, it was uh, it was great news. Uh, the, the experience you said, okay, Stanley Cup says Charlie was mentioning, but. You took this team at a real pivotal time to keep it relevant and get to the playoffs. Tell us about those playoff matchups that you had there, too. Oh, God. Uh, like no atmosphere I've ever been in to this day. I mean, uh, uh, I, I think the, uh, the craze of, of hockey in this city, uh, but the volume it came with and the, the, the way the whole city felt uh, during those times, there's nothing like going to the rink, yes, with your window down, uh, and your tie not done up yet, and a beautiful, you know, spring day, and, and you know you're, you got a playoff game coming, and that the whole people are on, in the streets all day. It's just a, it's an amazing atmosphere, and I think it's the credit uh, of management and, and this team structure and the culture that they develop with the winning. Uh, we had that inbred in us, and, and it was a challenge uh, for us to continue it. Uh, and I think from day one, as Kelly spoke. Uh, it's ingrained in us that uh, we're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy being an Oiler. But when you're out the rink, you're going to you're going to work. And, and uh, our goal was to win. And uh, we've done those two playoff wins back to back years. I believe it was against Dallas and in Colorado. I've just never been a part of. And I've been on. You know, like you said, you win the World Cup. It's amazing tournament. Amazing talent you're playing against. Uh, and I was able to win a Stanley Cup. Unfortunately, I had to play the Oilers in my only final. Uh, it was gut wrenching, but. I swear I've never felt like I had winning those two series. It was just a, a culmination. So uh, amazing uh, atmosphere. I hope it's. Uh, I hope there's another one around the corner for the others. Charlie, do you have any one lasting uh, memory or moment or favorite moment that you can think of through your long time here? Well, I think probably obviously winning the first Stanley Cup. I mean. You never know if you're going to get back again, and you know, it was, again, I was fortunate. But just to just to be able to skate around that ice and carry the Stanley Cup was was obviously special. And uh, you know, even back then, the fans were jumping on and getting on the ice and chasing <laughs> us around and stuff like that. A little different now, but it was uh, it, it was quite a memory. And you know, you work you work so hard, and your parents work so hard to drive you around and get you to the rinks and um, and stuff like that. And to be able to to be able to do it and carry the cup around, like I said, was uh, was pretty special. But just having the teammates that I had, you know, like, I mean, Koff was, we had a lot of great moments on the ice, you know. It's like it's like Bucky talked about that, I working out two a days. He, I think I was just up for a couple of games, and we were talking, and Koff said, he goes, hey, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> if you really want to impress the coaches, show them how hard you can work. He goes, here's what we're going to do. When the puck's in our end, I'm going to stand in front of the net, and you just work both corners. <laughs> and you'll show them how hard you can work. And I thought, well, this is I mean, great. I was only up for a couple of games. I'm going like, well, this is going to be kind of – and I thought maybe it's just joking around. And I get out there, and it's in our end, and he's standing in front of the net. <laughs> I'm going, really? So <laughs> there I go. But anyways, you know what? Great advice, I guess. It worked out for a, for a long time, so – um, you know, just all those all those memories that you you go through, and there's I mean, there's a million of them, and uh, I wish I could remember a lot of them. You know, it's funny. I got to interrupt. Yeah. Cough, cough, and Billy are very similar. Yeah, very bright, and they know how to. Billy used to say, "If the puck's in that corner, you should go get it. I'm going to stay here in the slot." And he goes, "But if it goes in the other corner, I'm going to stay in the slot here, and you should go get the puck." <laughs> and I'd be like, "Yeah, all right, good plan." <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, questions now from the floor? No. no. <laughs> from what? I owe you a lot. <laughs> okay, I'm... Uh, Doug, over here. Um, can you just give us a thought on, you guys won two playoff series against two teams that were ranked a lot higher than you guys were, and just just thought on being able to knock off Dallas and Colorado in those playoff series, and just the team you guys had, you know, some people don't think you had any business being on the ice with those guys and you're being able to pull off those wins. Yeah, uh, yeah that was part of the 
I think I talk about why it was so important at that time. Obviously, it was a different era. Uh, you know, I think I would estimate probably $30, $40 million more they made. Coach, Coach Ronnie used to, to remind us quite often uh, uh, that we were severe underdogs and, and we didn't belong and uh, it motivated us. But I think that was a huge part of it. Uh, you look in the standings and we'd have 84 points and make the playoffs just barely. We'd always have to fight and scratch our last six weeks. Uh, and uh, I think the greatest thing about it, which I think our game still raises a level it's not no argument in the playoffs, but the way the barometer used to be a little higher, I think everyone was out of their comfort zone on our team. Uh, I think we were, somebody told me with 10 minutes left in the third period of a game seven, I believe it was the Colorado game, we had 114 hits. I mean, everybody was buying in, uh, everybody raised their level, and we did not care if we were, for, we usually 40 points behind the team we were playing and $40 million cheaper. Uh, way to go, Glenn. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, that, that was a huge part of the motivation, and I think uh, the pride we had in, in playing for each other, uh, there's just no feeling like it. And it, it was different as I played in playoffs. I always felt the same, that I had to raise my game, but it's changed a bit in that way, and that was, uh, that was definitely a great time. And I also wanted to ask you about the 2006 Stanley Cup final. I know what was it like lifting the cup with one shoulder. I know it must have been an emotional night for you, but just what was that like? Take us back to that. Yeah, uh, I remember uh, in overtime, I had uh, my whole family, and it was game five at home, and uh, Fernando, I believe, picked off a little pizza and went in and scored shorthanded. And, and I had already been, Rafi hit me, kind of sandwiched me between him, uh, prongs and, uh, and, uh, and himself. And, I, you know, I knew I was done. My, I was feeling my shoulder hit myself in the ear. So it was up this high, and I was sitting on the bench, and I'm like, I'm finished. Uh, so that was tough to see that goal go in because I thought it was going to, you know, be over. It was 3-1 in the series. And I came here, and, and I said, Bucky, i got to get out of town, but I'm, I'm not playing. Uh, there's no way I can. So we went out to his cottage in, is it Pigeon Lake? Perfectly named <laughs> Pigeon Lake. <laughs> uh, and uh, he, took, he took me to a little pub there, and we just, you know, just like Kelly, just to get me out of town. And, and uh, you know, it was hard. We got spanked pretty good. I think it was four or five nothing, and, and uh, we were in one. Uh, and it was a great game seven. But uh, to be able to to do that, as Charlie said, there's no feeling uh, that you can ever describe it to somebody until you go through it. And uh, I had so many pills and drugs in me that uh, I didn't, I just heard it go crack like five times on the way up. And I thought I had it all the way, but it wasn't close. But uh, it was plenty high for me. It was great, great experience. Thanks.